Agriculture remains one of the key sectors of the Nigerian economy. It guarantees food security, provides employment and boosts revenue for the government. The potential for the sector in Nigeria are indeed enormous, particularly in terms of agro-processing and value addition. According to the 2015 World Bank report on Nigeria, agriculture generated 21% of gross domestic product GDP for the year, but is underdeveloped because of numerous impediments. Only 46% of arable land is cultivated. Farmers have no title to 95% of agricultural land, so are impeded from obtaining finance or investing in improvements. Poor rural roads undermines farm profitability, increases waste and impedes access to markets, imputes equipment and new technology. Rural schools, healthcare and clean water supplies are inadequate. In addition to these, Data on post-harvest losses due to inadequate storage facilities have undermined the real potential of the agricultural sector in Nigeria. The administration of President Muhammadu Buhari has identified agriculture as one of the most viable sectors to guarantee Nigeria's economic development and independence on crude oil. The Agricultural Promotion Policy APP, also known as the Green Alternative, is a deliberate attempt by the present administration to strategically develop agriculture in key areas of productivity, processing and livelihood support. The Agro-Processing, Productivity Enhancement and Livelihood Improvement Support Appeals Project is a six-year project developed by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development in collaboration with the World Bank and other stakeholders. The project aims at supporting the transition of small subsistence farmers' production system farming to a market-oriented agricultural undertaking and supporting middle-sized farmers to address constraints facing them and enhancing their productivity as well as effective participation in the value chain. In the case of appeals project, we are emphasizing value addition because that's where you will get higher premium and, if, and it also encourages us to now start thinking how do we export those commodities outside so that we can compete, compete favorably with other countries of the world. So the issue of value additions is very key in appeals project apart from just the production and since our key emphasis is to raise productivity within a unit area, you know, we are just not thinking of just uh, empowering these farmers with inputs, but also proven technologies that will raise their productivity from their present level to a higher level with the best kind of inputs that will raise their production and productivity and uh, improve value addition so that they will have a higher premium at the end of the day for sustainable income. The project is such so flexible to address the peculiarity of the people that they want to reach. So as you go across the state, you are not going to find the same story. The story you find in Lagos will be peculiar to Lagos in terms of the how and what they deliver. If you go to the East, you also see some slight difference. So, so, so what is important is that there is flexibility. There is focus on sustainability. The appeals project is presently running across six states of the Federation, namely Kogi, Kiduna, Kano, Cross River, Enugu, and Lagos State. Each of these states have priority value chain in three core areas of food security, export potential, and livelihood supports.
In Kogi State, for instance, the emphasis has been in providing support to farmers in Kishu, cassava and rice value chains through cooperative investment groups CIGs, and cluster arrangements. These supports are targeted at enhancing farming practices, implement support, developing business investment plans, processing and market accessibility through off-takers. Previously, we have been being in this uh, farm uh, business, but not up to this uh, extent. But it was a Kogi State's AP project that now came and uh, educated us how we should expand to our own benefit and to the benefit of the entire community where we live. In one hectare of land, we are expected to have something like 25 to 30 tons of uh, cassava. They gave us the cassava stem and they uh, train us on how we are to plant. Then, in terms of uh, equipment, they give us almost everything we need in the farm. Talk of a uh, tricycle, we have been given up to two tricycles to help us in our farm, uh, uh, in conveying our farm produce. They give us fertilizer, they give us NASA sprayer, chemical. Name it, even uh, we buy every all those things they, that's supposed to aid us in our farm. They gave everything to us, so we thank them very much. The value chain of Kishu has huge potential, particularly for export and livelihood support. Kashu farmers in Kogi have been assisted with vital equipment to ease farm operations and enhance productivity. What we are enjoying from appeal, we have never experienced it before. Sometimes we may not even be able to clear the whole of our plantation in the whole year, and of which a fire outbreak will overtake our farm, and it affects the yield of our, of our cashew. But with the aid of uh, uh, Kogi appeals and uh, the farming implement or tools given to the registered uh, cooperative farmers on cash given to us, there's a lot of improvement on the farm because of the uh, farm uh, implement given to us. In Cross River State, the synergy between the Appeals Project and the state agricultural agencies and relevant state actors is not only commendable, but demonstrates real intent in achieving development through agriculture. The Appeals Project was a project, even from its inception, that we were very excited about. I tell you that uh, the project is as important as uh, for the governor to have drafted me, even as a deputy governor, because of my agricultural background, uh, to participate in uh, making sure that uh, we put the program together uh, as soon as possible so that we can uh, actually benefit. And we're lucky to have been selected among the few states that were to benefit with the Appeals Project. The Appeals uh, Project is a major pillar for our, the, the growth of our industries, uh, the agro-processing industries here in the state, and by extension, the economy of the state. Across all the local government areas and the senatorial districts, there's at least one thing about agriculture, that's one industry. We have at least 38 industries in Cross River State and County. Over 60% of them are agro-based. So we know that Cross River State is like the second largest cocoa producer in the country. So we have, for example, the cocoa industry, the cocoa factory in Ecom. And then we are also one of the largest producers of groundnuts in the country. Appeals helps us to improve on our value chain of this produce. 
the Cross River Appeals has supported farmers in providing key implements to enhance productivity, post-harvest processing, value addition and improve market accessibility for produce in its value chains. It is a kind of uh, innovation that we have seen here because the other meal does not have this kind of husk. It has only the bran. But this one we can see the bran and we can see the husk. And this husk can also be used to produce briquette which is also economical, we can use it to, to, to generate heat, we can sell it as firewood to generate income. Yeah. And also, it, uh, it attracts more buyers because they come for stone-free rice. And sometimes, even if you have the stoner with the local model meal, it can only be stone, but there will be so much chaff. But this one, after the stoning, it is also the chaff. Our intention is to create over 10 million, 10 million employment for the youth and women of Cross River State. In all these value chains, I'm not telling you things are not, are not physical. Cross River State, we have gone beyond the dependency on oil because we don't even have the oil. Since we lost Bakasi at about 12 years ago, uh, depends, the, the, the Cross River State was, is not getting anything from the Federation account since we lost Bakasi. We are no longer among the oil producing states. Beneficiary farmers in Kaduna State have attested to the significant impact of appeals in the state. The ginger farmers in Kafanchan now have embraced improved agronomic practices to guarantee more yields and market accessibility to improved revenue, all courtesy of the Kaduna Appeals Project. If you see the area that is put into cultivation, like one hectare, you can generate, up, you can get up to 300 bucks in one hectare. And at 30,000 per bag, that's about 3, 3, 3 million. So it changes your life seriously. When you see the, those that are into digital farming, they live better than all those that are into other uh, crops. So we're highly encouraging them to go into the ginger farming because you put a small land into cultivation, then you, you generate a lot of wealth within that area. Almost 80% of those that are into ginger farming are women. When you go around, take the statistics of those that are cultivating ginger within this area, most of them are women. Yes, most of them are women. Because the men are money in into uh, food crops, like uh, rice, uh, maize, and other things. Gaskiya lokacin da wannan kungiyan office ba ta zo ba akwai yanzu da ta zo akwai bambanci da yawa tun yanzu mun samu taki mun samu magunguna ba kaman da ba da ba mu da taki dan amfanin gonan ma yanzu ya fi kyau The quality of dairy from the cattle livestock is of concern to the Kaduna State Appeals Project particularly initiatives at improving productivity, quality, and hygiene of the produce for consumers, in addition to encouraging sedentary livestock farming, which has been identified as more efficient for livestock management. Who come away in the Mazajanu? Daba with the Idan Tumuna Ganusuni de Ahoto, who are the Joe Haka, the Kasamoji, Kuma. Muna gani yanda in suna tazan madara yanda dabbobi su suke ba da madara to gashi mu yanzu Allah ya sa mu an kawo mana don idan suka bi suka barbari namu dabbobi suka haifa muna gani sha Allah mu madaran zai canza za mu zai inganta mana rayuwar mu da kyau da kyau Maize farmers have equally enjoyed significant support from the Kiduna State Appeals in terms of new implements for land operations, specifically for ploughing and planting. This implement support 
techniques intended to reduce dodgery, encourage more female farmers and improve productivity. In Enugu State, poultry production is one of the mainstay of the local economy. Enugu State Appeals has helped farmers in expanding production capacity, improve farm practices and create opportunities for the residents. In addition to providing technical training and financial empowerment for women and youths who intend to venture into poultry farming. The, the capacity of the farm today is about 23,000 bears inside this farm. That 11,400 bears there. They are laying a crate in 30 pieces. When you divide 30 pieces by 11,400, you look at the number of eggs that will be coming out from there. They will be laying up to 500 and something crates every day. of storage and processing facilities have resulted in post-harvest losses for cashew farmers in Enugu State over the years. The Enugu State Appeals has intervened significantly in this subsector through strategic support to cashew farmers involved in processing of the product. Uh, here in Nigeria, the cashew price is not okay because of exploitation of the middlemen that buys the run out at the RCN and exports. But thank God for the appeal and the government of Nigeria today that uh, they have made it a way that uh, there's no need of exporting, but it's processing it here. One of the key objectives of the Appeals Project is productivity enhancement in specific value chain. The Kano State Appeals has intervened in providing support to agro-processors in the rice value chain. This is meant for value addition and improved post-harvest processing of the product. Appeals Projects look at look, look the deficiency of our processing they try as much as possible to invite us to give them the our the nature of does our business plan so that they can look at it and see how they will help us into. After we did that, they help us with these giant machines. This machine that you are seeing can produce 7.5 tons per hour. So, which at the, compared to the the manual process, as you can see, is just five tons per day. The Kano State Appeals intervention in tomato production is innovative and a fulfillment of the key component of the project in empowering women, youths and persons with disability to guarantee inclusion. The greenhouse farming is a proven method to improve productivity, specifically in the tomato value chain. 
The Kano experience in this regard affirms the appeals project's commitment to productivity enhancement. I'm feeling very happy for this wonderful, wonderful project. It will enhance my life and, and provide job opportunities to the others. The Lagos State Appeals Project offers unique opportunities to farmers in aquaculture, rice processing and poultry production value chains. Indeed, the agricultural potential of the state in these sectors are largely undermined based on perception. The kind of focus we have on agriculture now is unprecedented. Um, you have the Mota rice mill, which is obviously the largest rice mill in Nigeria, coming up and it should be commissioned in this year itself. Uh, with 32 metric tons per hour um, capacity uh, for processing, it requires almost 300,000 metric tons of rice paddy. That means in terms of the catalyzation across the entire rice value chain in Nigeria, that should definitely give you well over 250,000 jobs across the entire value chain. So it shows you that in as much as we may not be cultivating on the land, but in the chain, if we focus more on processing, that means value addition, we will definitely make a lot more impact across the entire value chain. Ofada rice is a popular delicacy in many homes, restaurants and ceremonies across Nigeria. As with many local rice in Nigeria, the challenge of stones and pebbles due to poor post-harvest processing is common and constitutes a problem to acceptability in the market. The Lagos State Appeals has intervened in solving this problem with some clusters of Ofada rice processors with the supply of infrared distoning machine. Before when you eat Ofada, you have this uh, thing stuck in your gums that you'll be trying to extract. With the appeal support, our bodies have been lifted. Uh, they have really support our work and made our work easier actually. The cost, color sorter as is, is one thing. We could process a ton of rice in two, three weeks then. But now, within three days, we can process a ton. Lagos State offers a huge market to agri-products. The Appeals Project has equally leveraged on this potential to develop electronic applications to harness the market, a convergence for sellers, off-takers and regular buyers. As a buyer, once you come on Wired or NG and you're interested in buying any of the agri-products, the first thing you do, you click on agriculture. And once you click on agriculture, you are taken to the agriculture product gallery page. So right now I'm on this page right now and um, I can see a lot of products. So I scroll to my product of interest. As a buyer, I'm interested in buying, I'm interested in buying of further local rice. So I select. It's helped us to, to reach the unreachables. And it makes, it, it makes life easier for us because me as a producer, I just want to produce. And I don't want anyone to start owing me and I have to start chasing after them. So Mara to me, Wara to me is like the marketer that I needed a long time ago. Indeed, the appeals project in the selected six states, even though still ongoing, has proven to be timely, focus-driven, and impactful on farmers and all the stakeholders in the value chain. In its mid-term evaluation recently conducted by the World Bank, it indicates that most of the value chains have surpassed the 35% targeted yield increase from the baseline figures, recording a 48.9% increase in average yield. The project has recorded a total of 39,209 
direct beneficiaries, that is 60.84% male, 39.16% females, representing 65.35% of the project, 60,000 beneficiaries and 196,045 indirect beneficiaries who benefited in a total of 87 business alliances and outgrower schemes established across the six participating states. The project has in no small measures contributed to the national food basket across the different value chains.